Good morning and welcome to the ongoing series of uh, interviews with professors internationally uh, hosted by the Professors World Peace Academy. I'm Frank Kaufman. I'm the director of the Professors World Peace Academy and it's our great pleasure today to welcome for our interview series, Professor Hanoch ben Pazi. Professor ben Pazi is the chair of the Department of Jewish Philosophy at Bar Ilan University in Israel. Professor ben Pazi researches contemporary philosophy and modern Jewish thought. He especially has done a great deal of work in the philosophical writings and Jewish thought of Martin Buber, Franz Rosenzweig, Emmanuel Levinas, and Jacques Derrida. Professor Ben Pazi writes on ethics, contemporary philosophy, and modern Jewish thought in the framework of religious studies and interreligious dialogue. One of his many works is, in, is the book Interpretation as Ethical Act, The Hermeneutics of Emmanuel Levinas, and also the, the book Emmanuel Levinas, Educational Contract, Responsibility, Hopefulness, and Alliance. Please join me to welcome to our program, Professor Hanoch Ben Pazi. Hello, Professor. Hi, Frank. Very good to have you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Um, so it's morning here in New York. It's late afternoon there with you, I think. Yeah, that's right. And which city are you in in Israel? Now I'm, I'm in Modi'in. Okay. Where they live. Um, not in well, the university. It's late afternoon, so I'm home. Very good. Very good. Well, I'm glad we're together. And um, I'm going to jump right in. We'll take 30 or 40 minutes together because work that you've done a little bit ago, some time ago, happens to turn out to be enormously relevant for the very moment that we're living through and one that really no one saw coming, I think, um, which is uh, the context of the racial, racial sensitivity and racial uh, kind of protests and uprisings internationally, and especially in the U.S., and work that you had done that that uh, we set aside to uh, converse, to uh, exchange or have our exchange and converse over um, wasn't uh, based on your research in South Africa with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which you will refer to as TRC. So for our listeners, when you're hearing these letters, TRC, it has to do with the truth and reconciliation commissions in post-apartheid South Africa. So very quickly, um, the title of the piece I'm working with and which I've studied to, uh, and the professors kindly agreed to expound on his research, it's called Chapter 7, and uh, I learned recently, and the professor will explain it's a chapter of what, but the name of it is Bearing Witness, Responsibility, and Reconciliation and the, in the in Levinasian Thought, the Truth and Reconciliation Commissions of Post-Apartheid South Africa. So, of course, Levinasian refers to the philosophical work of um, uh, Levinas. Uh, professor, first name is Emmanuel? Am I correct? Emmanuel? Emmanuel yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes, of course. A very well known, and my embarrassment, forget for a second, Emmanuel Levinas. So, this is chapter seven. Uh, can you first tell us? It's chapter seven of what? Because I think it was also published as an independent journal article, and uh, maybe perhaps there's more to come from this article. So first of all, thank you very much, Frank, for inviting me to, to talk with you, to talk about my uh, research. And I am definitely agree that it's relevant to the, our days and uh, what's happened in the society, maybe in the state, but also in Israel and everywhere, and a lot of places in the world. Yes. Um, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, 
the truth is that uh, this is chapter seven. It's uh, an essay that published in a journal um, okay. as an independent research. But yes. for me, it is part of the new book that I'm going to uh, now going to finish the manuscript for that to talking about the meaning of witnessing. And Very the meaning good. of witnessing from the phenomenological phen point of view, from philosophical point of view, I mean, from the ethical point of view, from the theological point of view. And Fantastic. And one step to the other to think through this philosophical concept about a real problem in the politics, in the social environment, in the society, between people, between uh, countries. So, so even it's now it's just an essay, independent essay, independent research, it's going to be published in a great book about the meaning of witnessing. Fantastic. Well, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll, we will be involved in promoting that as soon as it's ready. Um, and so the readers can, uh, and listeners can keep an eye on this space so that we can keep an eye on your forthcoming work. Thank you. Yeah, I want to do a couple of things before really the stage is yours. And um, so the first thing I want to do is, and this is from prior conversation we've had, that the term witnessing per se uh, has a number of meanings and uh, some of which we'll cover, some of which are not the meaning at all of what you'll be looking at and what, what you've written in this particular essay. So there's a common use of the word witnessing, which, which describes uh, uh, evangel evangelizing, proselytizing testimony to one's faith. So one goes out on the street to witness, or I'm witnessing, I'm testifying to my faith. It's often associated with evangelical, Christian evangelical work to witness and to try to bring people to Christ. So that use of the word witnessing is not what you've considered and not, I believe, not under what we're discussing. There's other uses of the word to witness, which means to see something. Uh, I've witnessed an event. Uh, there's a noun to be called as a witness in which you might be summoned to a court of law, or in this particular case, to the uh, to the uh, tribunal of the commissions, in which you are called as a witness, that you have to testify truthfully and honestly about what you know to be the facts of the case. That's Those are closely related to witness, namely to see, and to be a witness, uh, to be called under oath or uh, under trust of some sort to... Um, report what you've seen, and that has to be reliable. And um, finally, uh, oh, oh, and the other distinction was that, it, which you'll be able to help us with in a second, um, there in, the, there in the, the commissions, someone would be called as a witness. They might even be, it's almost confession. They, they're reporting on their own deeds so they might be a perpetrator of misdeeds, and they are a they're a witness in the process, or another person might have been a victim of the uh, the misdeeds or oppressions that arose out of the individual's action, and the um, or and the systems that were in place there. So so there's there in the situation in South Africa, and correct me uh, when I'm when we uh, release to you here. Uh, there, there is a witness telling of my own deeds, a witness telling of what I've been uh, subject to, and a witness in, in that third use and classical use of I've seen this, I testify this as the case. That's the third type. So the last thing, Professor, and thanks for your patience, I want to do is ju to just read what the, what the um, Minister of Justice described when introducing the truth and reconciliation commissions because here's here's where i here's where i want the listener to live with at least me and i'm sure you as well on the extreme relevance of the moment because we're going to be moving into philosophy theology some rarefied stuff of the recent french philosophers that may be difficult for the listener but we're 
this is for the sake of moving on together in a wholesome way for a brighter future. And so here's what the justice, the commission, the, uh, the uh, uh, minister of justice said, introducing the commissions. I have the privilege and responsibility. I'm reading, just quoting, and thanks for your patience on this, Professor. I have the privilege and responsibility to introduce today a bill which provides a pathway, a stepping stone towards the historic bridge of which the Constitution speaks, whereby our society can leave the past of a deeply divided society characterized by strife, conflict, untold suffering and injustice, leave that and commence the journey towards a future founded on the recognition of human rights, democracy, and peaceful coexistence and development of opportunities for all South Africans, irrespective of color, race, class, belief, or sex. So in a certain way, this was one of the greatest experiments of all times. And to whatever degree it was successful or failed, you'll be able to tell us more. Uh, certainly the United States, countries around the world are looking for the very same processes and, and opportunities to be honest about broken past and to be hopeful and deliberate about a, a, a shared future of, of profound human equality. So thanks for letting me talk so long by way of introduction. But uh, Professor, you, can you pick up on any part of what I've mentioned so far? So first of all, thank you for this quotation from the, um, from uh, the, um, the, uh, the Minister the, of Justice. The Minister gave the account about the meaning of uh, TRC that was the Reconciliation Commission, and it is very important because they understood, he understood and they understood that this is a historical fact, historical act, what they did, what they did together in the TRC. And I want to deal with this issue um, from a religious perspective, from an ethical perspective, and maybe from a social perspective perspective and Very I, good. I tell oh, you professor just i'm sorry i'm interrupting already i the, please, the listeners should know you were there you were there you spent time in Af south yeah. africa and uh so as you move as you i'm sorry i'm uh interrupt again but when you go into the the essence of your work which is profound but also i'm sure that we, uh, your listeners would love to know what that must have been like so uh, th thanks for both coming up. I, uh, sorry to interrupt. Thank you. So I really wanted to deal with this issue, this uh, journey to South Africa, because and I want to share with you the way I arrived to this issue, to this topic. I work about the meaning of testimony and witnessing, in Hebrew it's called ed, edut, to give a witness, to bear witness. From the phenomenological point of view, it's very philosophical uh, topic, question about who see the other person, what does it mean to be regarded by the other person, and this kind of issue. It's not important for us now. And then I realized that the main witnessing of talking about the one who see something, mm -hmm. who hear something, experience something, it is very important, not only from the, uh, um, from what I call later, uh, from the Levinasian point of view, but also from the historical point of view. Because there was an event, very dramatic, I may say heroic event, in the uh, history of South Africa, when Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu try to change the history between the people in South Africa. Mm. And, and they ask themselves, how we, can we live after the apartheid regime? Mm. How can we live in the time of post-apartheid when the racism is all over the world? 
all over the society, all over the country. And we want to continue to the new future with hope, to think in different kind of issue, mm. and be new. Yes. And it was very important for the Desmond Tutu that we have to face the history. We have to forgive what happened to us and to others in the history of South Africa. Desmond Tutu said, there is no future without forgiveness. Mm. And the truth, what's happened to me, and it's very interesting, not only for me, I think, that I read a lot before I arrived to, to South Africa. Mm -hmm. I read the volume of the TRC, seven very <laughs> huge <laughs> and difficult and deep. Um, and, and part of that is, is really, really difficult to read, to read what happened there. Mm. Between the people, between the races, between the police, police and the uh, and the um, all the, the citizens, and between the police and themselves, it was very very, very difficult to read it. Mm -hmm. And I felt myself, oh, I know everything, and now I come to to South Africa to talk. I prepared this journey very very well, and I arrived to Johannesburg, and I may tell you, in the first moment. First moment when I left the airport, I realized that I have to meet the people to understand what happened there. Mm -hmm. Because one of the, the first sentence that someone told me, told me, and it was, you know, I'm, I'm not sure about it, if the taxi driver, it was the taxi driver who took me from the airport to, the, to the, my uh, hotel. And I asked a few questions about, uh, he asked me, what, what are you doing here? I look like a professor and why I'm arrived to be honest, <laughs> etc. And I said, I want to talk with the TRC. Oh, you have to know. Reconciliation, maybe. Truth, no. <laughs> I said, what? Oh. I read the truth. No. And then after a few sentences, we talk, continue to talk. And he said, you know, in a very uh, a special uh, um, accent. You know that for you, I know, I'm not sure why you think that I'm from the state at the beginning. I told him that I'm from Israel, but it's okay for me. <laughs> and then he said, for you in the state, there is a PC, politically correct. No, no. Here in South Africa, black is black, white is white. Don't talk like this. Mm. We have to deal with the race. And in this very simple conversation that I had between the airport to the, the hotel, I realized that I have to reframe all what I read before. Mm -hmm. And because, and the truth is that it's very early to think what is the result of the TRC. It's only 25 years now. Yeah. I was there before uh, five years, 20 years. Because People still there. The people that, uh, the individuals, the person that came before the court, that came before the committee, before the commissions, before the TRC, and they talked about what happened to them, what happened to the other people, what did they see, what did they hear? And they still there live with their enemies that might be together. Mm -hmm. And for this point of view, I can talk about the TRC and the meaning witnessing. Because, and please uh, let me divide between what's happening in the TRC and yeah. the way that Desmond Tutu, uh, Desmond Tutu thought about what's happened there. He is a religious leader. For <laughs> him, it is very important that all he has done in the TRC was to give a witness before God about the equality, about humanity, about the belief in the future, belief between people. And for him, all this event has a religious meaning. Mm. We have to understand that because from a philosophical point of view, I will talk about 
what is the meaning to, to, to the person that arrived to the TRC and give testimony, bear a witness about what happened to him, to his family, to someone else, or to his good friend that disappeared during the apartheid. Yeah. But for Desmond Tutu, all what we are talking about has a religious meaning. Hmm. For the first and foremost, hmm. to give a witness is to send, stand before God and say, this is the truth, or this is my truth. This is the best way that I understand what's happened here, what's uh, happened in the history, what happened in South Africa. So, Professor, it sounds to me as though, it sounds to me as though he's the, he's the main architect of the TRC, I think. Am I, that's correct, right? He's the driving force, Desmond Tutu, isn't, or... or the, 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 Nelson Mandela was a political leader. Yes. He thought about the future. He thought about the way to change the future of South Africa. Yes. He realized because of his biography, because of the, the events, he made a lot of efforts to deal with this question. Yes. But he, and, but he, he looking for a, a, um, a way, an act, a traditional way to deal with the problem with uh, conflict between people. Yes. It took a very traditional African um, act that you don't take the people to the court, but you give testimony, witnessing about what happened. You told about your side, the other per uh, person talk about his side. And then because you gave a witness, mm -hmm. that's that. That's enough. We know what's happened and now we can continue on. And but we arrived to this one, Tutu. Yeah. Tutu was a Christian tradition. And from his point of view, he thought also about the forgiveness, about the importance to give these people that made a very terrible and bad and horrible act mm. that you can imagine you gave them the opportunity to continue in their life mm. for desmond tutu forgiveness was the most important uh, accurate uh, um, act in all the trc yes this is so fascinating i, I realize now just in your last three sentences that there's actually a thousand books to be written on this every every inch of it uh, the the touch point between political purposes and spiritual purposes and the integration of like something as spiritual as forgiveness how vital is that to a, just purely political calculations if you're trying to create a fair and just and harmonious society is it even possible just by purely political uh, matters or techniques uh, so that the relationship between these two men and the their the inner the inner mind with which they agreed to collaborate for the creation of these commissions itself is fascinating um, is this uh, how do you, what do you I, I want to, to continue with your talk mm -hmm. what was fascinating for me and Please forgive me that I will, excuse me for sharing with you a, a very short philosophical uh, um, perspective of the meaning of witnessing. Mm -hmm. From the first impression, when you think about witness, to be a witness, you think about the third person. Right. Someone that is not part of the event, mm -hmm. so, so see something, hear something, and give a witness about what happened there. Right. The most uh, common uh, uh, witness now in our day is 
the witness about accident, mm-hmm. car accident. Someone go uh, walk in the street and he saw something in the uh, between two cars, and then nothing happened to the drivers. It's okay, <laughs> just for yeah. the story. And the police ask who saw something, and there is someone said. I'm just walk here and I, I walk on and I didn't stand there and my stand there and so he gave a witness of what what happened there yeah but from phenomenological point of view to be a witness to something is to be part in the situation to be part including in the situation that you saw and um, and and just to uh, that our listener can under can feel something about it i will share you with you when i when i talk with my students i told them don't think about themselves about yourself as a witness think about yourself when someone else saw you what happened to you when you realized that someone else around you So you give your attention that change your behavior that should change your feeling and I've obviously said yes of course if I know that someone see me I change my way of behavior mm. so to be a witness the meaning of being a witness is to be involved in the situation that you are witness to mm-hmm. right when the tears see you work in the South Africa, all of the country heard the voices, the testimonies, the act. They have all the radio stations, all the television, all the newspaper. One year and a half, you can hear day after day these testimonies. Hmm. And everyone can be part of Of the apartheid situation mm. and to be par- part of the reconciliation also mm. Mm. because they, knew they, they have to be part of that mm. I talked to someone in, uh, in Cape Town very nice person she told me we um, we talk in her office and then we walk a little and when we walk she told me you know this is this was my office and in the TRC at the, the time of the TRC and I uh, used to work from this office to uh, my own right away and all the way I heard the voices from the radio <laughs> because all the shops the radio was open and I heard the testimony after testimony and it was part of the environment of all the country for this the Wow. Months. It is more amazing. More than a year. More than a year, you no, say. More than a year. And, and if I may interrupt... For, for, one professor. second. Oh, no. One just second, just one second. Okay. And you understand that part of this testimony, you can't hear. It's so hard to hear it. Oh. That you have to be part of that. Mm. My, my, my brief interruption was, were people... Were people like kind of gripped by this was was this everything was everybody listening was was the whole country was this everything uh, in life uh, for for this year or more as much as I understand the situation and you know I arrived 20 years later um, and I can see that there is a difference between the young and the adults of course mm-hmm. because for the adults the Is part of their biography yes they were part of this event historical event and for not a lot of them but for few of them they felt that this is not only an historical event in the life of South Africa but historical event in the life of the world of all humanity it is they, yes they construct the a new way of deal with a political conflict between people in the most uh, extreme situation of the apartheid right. Right. between the races, between the black and the white and the colors. And what happened there 
that you have to, you know, you may, you may say that the best way is to <laughs> close your eyes, look forward and say, the past is not important. I want to talk about the future. And Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela requ- require them to listen mm. to what's happened there. Mm. You know, when I think about the situation now in uh, Europe, in the state, in Israel, I said, do we have the courage to do that? Yeah, do that's right. Do that? mm. Uh, or just the fortitude, just the just the endurance, the, the physical endurance to to do this as a world, uh, as the South Africans did. And, and you know, um, there were I, I, I have a lot of experience from the from the uh, this journey to South Africa. And I'm so glad. Thank you very much for taking me back to <laughs> South Africa. What happened there? Mm. Because it was very uh, intensive time for me there. I have a lot of meetings and between people, um, just for um, for uh, um, pictures. This issue, I arrived to the um, to, to someone. She's a social worker in uh, in Johannesburg. She worked with the people um, in the small uh, um, small neighborhood. In Johannesburg, Johannesburg is not a very easy uh, um, city until today. Mm. And we talk about, and she told me, you know, that a lot of the people uh, um, you have to you have to know, there are a lot of people that didn't agree to give witnessing, to give testimony before the TRC, mm. and they are really sorry about it. Oh, all their life they feel that they missed something. Mm. They wanted to give a testimony and they're afraid to do that, not only about what happened to them, but about acts that they did, Mm. that they did against other people. Mm. Because someone was a policeman and you don't have to imagine, to guess, what does it mean to be a policeman in this uh, the, the regime of the apartheid? Right. And he is still sorry about the situation. He regrets that he didn't give a testimony. So she worked with him. She worked with other people. And at the end of this uh, uh, meeting, she um, she asked me, uh, ben Paz, um, um, she called me Hanoch. Hanoch. I can talk, and all the people that can uh, <laughs> say that she said, Hanok, um, Hanok, <laughs> can you? I, I made a good word for you. I said, You were wonderful. I'm so thank you very much. So now you will do what I ask you to do. <laughs> okay? You will go to visit the jail of the apartheid regime. And I said, okay, if you ask me to do, no, because I want you to be there. And I asked my friend in the jail, in the prisoner, in the prison, to mm. see, to, to show you the, uh, um, the places, the rooms in these places, in the violence that have been there. And I went there, her, fr- uh, her friend waited for me and took me uh, to a small visit, very short visit, you know, just because she asked me to do it, so I'll do that for you, it's okay. Mm. And it took me one room to the other, and I was shocked. What is the meaning of this that I was shocked? Mm. I, I understand, I understood that more than any other um, articles, any other dialogue, conversation, just to see the places mm. where this violent act happened. It was very, very hard to see it. Yeah. It's uh, empty rooms now. Yeah, you know, there is no picture. Yeah, not right. Empty, but you understand a lot from that. Yeah. Um, 
So this kind of, of, of question, you know, when she asked me to do that, I, I was naive. Okay, if you ask me, I'll do that. Yeah, right, until you're suddenly there and then... And then you realize, yeah. yeah. You know, um, part of the story of witnessing, and this is very hard to talk about, but please let me talk about it a little bit. Yes, please. Um, you know, when, you, when, when we saw very hard pictures, we have to ask ourselves what's happened to us in this situation. Mm. From one point of view, we saw it and we say, wow, this is horrible. This is so sad to see this kind of picture. This is very uh, problematic to see it. But there is a very small drive in ourselves that like to see the bed that like to see the herbal pictures. For example, yes. we can think about the pictures that every one of our listeners remember, or if not remember, you know. And this is the 9-11. Mm -hmm. This is herbal pictures. When you understand what is the meaning of this terrorist attack. Terrorist attack. And we know it. Yes. But we can't, we have to see it. We, have, we, we, we feel that we have to see this kind of, of event. And we ask ourselves, why? Mm. And this is part of the, what the, wit the, the phenomenology of witness um, can explain us, that we have to deal not with what happened there, what happened inside our, our ourselves. Mm -hmm. What is the deep meaning of this drive that let us, that ask us to take this kind of picture and say, oh, it's so sad to see these pictures. Yeah. This image, this image of the plan, what happened there? Yeah. But part of the situation of witnessing is not only to deal with the history, biography, is also to deal with ourselves, mm. with the deep bit of our personality, our character, the different aspect of our character, our personality, and to face it and to understand that this is part of the story that we have to deal with. Yes. For Levinas, and people mm -hmm. want to add Levinas to the, our conversation, for Levinas, this is the meaning of responsibility. Mm. We have to take responsibility to what we have witnessed to, what we heard, what we did, and then we can continue to deal with the ethical problems, the ethical issues in our life. Yeah. And if I'm if I'm not mistaken, and I'm guessing here, I've I've read the I've read the philosophy, but it, it he almost manages to conflate morality and ontology because you describe the the act of witnessing as it's participatory in so like the example you gave your students if you know you're being watched hasn't that impacted your behavior so the witness is actually a participant and it, that that's just an ontological or matter of logic just by describing the fact and yet and that draw that that definition as participant carries with it responsibility for the event. Is do do I catch anything there uh, in the you are philosophy? Definitely right, because when we talk about ontology, we talk about a, a facts. What happened mm -hmm. here? What happened there? What is what we what is uh, what is the being? What is the non-being? But for Levinas, the fact that you saw something, that I saw something, um, has an ethical meaning. Mm -hmm. That I have to bear witness to this issue, to this mm -hmm. act, to this person. Yes. And for Levinas, the involvement of the other person in my life, because I saw him, make me 
responsible for him, for his desire, yeah. for his needs, from from his means. I need to do something for him. Yeah. And here it is very important, and this is the way that I when I try to think about the the TRC on on its on our political issues on social issues, I realize that when I think about the situation, not from uh, the outsider, but from the insider, from the person that involved in the situation, I, I, I may understand what is the meaning of responsibility that I have. I, there is a very famous play that uh, uh, of words that uh, in uh, France, but we can do, also do it in English. What is the meaning of responsibility? Response, ability. Mm. When you mm. have the ability to respond, you have the responsibility. Mm. When someone mm. comes to you in his need, in his word, in his asking, and you hear it, ipso facto, you are responsible for him. Yeah. Ipso facto, for this situation that you saw the other person as the other make you a subject that is responsible to the other person. Mm -hmm. And here, the ethical point of view is very demanded, as you can understand. Right. It's, it becomes inescapable. It's somehow, he's, somehow he's, he's torn the veil between the being and, a kind of, and the separation that's a kind of tacked on and and independently of that, we also have moral responsibilities. It's not an also anymore with Levinas. It's it's folded into being and morality are a simultaneous. Uh, I, I can I can follow your your sentence. Wonderful sentence. Thank you very much. Because for Levinas, this is the meaning of of the subjectivity of the subject. Mm -hmm. The person, the human being became a, per, a subject when he agreed to be subjected to this re ethical request. Mm -hmm. To be subject is to be in relation to the other, but not, not because you think about yourself, but because you understand that there is an other in his otherness and you are responsible for his otherness. What uh, usually yeah. even us yeah. call it alterité. He calls it what? Alterité. Okay. Otherness, uh, alterité. Yeah, or yeah, like yeah. alterité. So mm -hmm. for Levinas, this is a, a very uh, 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 important act, to, an, an act, the important uh, um, understanding of human being that is responsible for the other. And I want to. Um, may I, I share a, 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 another point in this issue? Yes, please. And and soon we're soon we're uh, out of time, but uh, wow. please, please uh, carry on. You know, Levinas, Emmanuel Levinas, um, was a philosopher of the the uh, second half of the twentieth century, yes. and he asked, and he asked for. Uh, the, for the for his readers, for his listener, what is the meaning of be a person, a human being, in the second half of the 20th century? Mm -hmm. We have to ask ourselves about these two great world world war, right. the Holocaust, after the apartheid, after yeah. what happened in uh, in Japan, what, what happened in a lot of places in the world, yes. and a lot of names, you know. Rwanda, Auschwitz, uh, Biafra. We have a lot of names of places mm. that it's really hard to hear about. Yes. And then you think we have to return, to come back to the elementary re uh, uh, relation between people. And when you return to the, the first step, the first step is between one and the other person, between me and the other, between the other and the third person. And when we think about this meeting, 
relation, we will understand again what is the meaning of subjectivity of the subject, not because he wanted to be the best, but because he wanted to be responsible for other people. Yeah, how great, how great. Professor, as, as we conclude, I wonder if you might not uh, help us here. Every, I think every conscientious person alive is wanting to, wanting to be a part of responding well, even if we are not aware of ourselves as having any culpability in the race problems. And, uh, and we're witnessing, we, we're witnessing a kind of an upheaval of sorts. Can you blend somehow this, this wisdom of the witness in a word that might be helpful for just your average person? And that's all of us really, uh, in the moment. I, I may say that one of the questions when you, un, when you realize the meaning of witnessing in your life, the next question, and it's a very crucial question, how can I deal with this responsibility? Yes. In one aspect, it's to go to the court and bear witness about what's happened. In the other is to take your life and be in witness and to do something to make your society better. Mm -hmm. to make the life of the other person better. But for Levinas, the glory of the witness is because when you understand the deep meaning of this responsibility, this is the way that you, you live a place for God to be part of your life. I see. Mm. When you are bearing witness to the other person, you gave a witness to glorification, to the glory of the God in our life. Yeah. And um, in Hebrew, there is a very nice name, Tehillah Ta'edot. It's like, uh, uh, Tehillah is like the hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's the glory of the God when you gave the witness to the other person is in his otherness, to the other <laughs> In the fantastic the way we have to deal with that question it's fantastic fantastic i can't think of a i can't think of a more perfect way to end uh, either we go on forever or we have to pick some moment and uh and that is that's the perfect one so can you give the can you give the uh, hebrew and the english one last time and then uh and then we'll say goodbye how, what are the terms again, please? Tehillat ha'edut. The glory mm. of the witnessing. Beautiful. Like, hallelujah. Tehillat ha'edut. The glory of witnessing. It, Thank it, you so much for inviting me to this uh, conversation. It was wonderful dialogue and a wonderful time with you. Thank you. Well, thank you for giving us all a lot to think about and a lot to work with. I look forward to a future time again, Professor. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.